the nature boy replaced one of the most well-known wrestlers in the entire world. His recent return to the ring was polarizing, but Flair has been a polarizing figure practically his whole career. He is one of the best heels to ever set a foot in the wrestling ring and was the best promo guy of the decade. Flair's journey to becoming a legend is today beginning in the 70s, and there's a lot you should know about his career from back then. So without further ado, join us now to get some interesting facts you should know about Rick Flair's career in the 70s. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more videos. The first official match of Flair's career happened while he competed in the AWA on December 10, 1992. His first opponent was Scrap Iron, George Gadaski, who had been wrestling for over a decade and was 19 years older than the Nature Boy. According to Flair, the match was an impromptu bout and he fought as the U. The match ended in a 10 minute draw, although Gadaski would defeat Flair in 1973. Many fans have come to know Flair for his slimmer look in the 80s and 90s, but he used to wrestle at almost 300 pounds. In 1975, at the age of 26, he suffered a huge injury after a plane crash that almost took his life and did take the life of the pilot. He ended up breaking his back in three places and was told by doctors he would never wrestle again. As fans know from his 2022 match, where he had many physical problems, Flair is not a quitter and he left so well that he returned to the ring three months after the almost ending injury. He had to dim down to 180 pounds to recover which has made the images from the Nature Boy's early career to almost be unrecognizable. Not only did he survive the plane crash, but was voted Rookie of the Year in 1975. The potential for Flair to be a star was evident even in his early days. Flair was not only a standout talent among others, but Pro Wrestling Illustrated also voted him Rookie of the Year in 1975. He would earn the distinction again over 10 years later in 1987. PWI Magazine was first established in 1971 making Flair the fourth rookie of the year ever. Before he was for the rookie of the year in 1975, he competed for the International Wrestling Enterprise in 1973. He also competed his first non-catch match at the company. IWE would become defunct in 1981 and Flair never returned after 1973. Although many of his high profile fields against Akugan, Rick Steamboat and Roddy Piper become more known in the 80s and 90s, he fought all of them in the 70s. The list of stars he battled with against in the decades include many current Hall of Famers like Dusty Rhodes, Andre the Giant, Kerry Hennen, and Jim Snooker. Like Hogan, he never had a single title run in the 70s. The most famous solar title won in the 70s was the AWA United States FWA Championship, which he earned from the wrestling icon Bob Brazil. It wasn't until 1981 that Flair would finally win the AWA World FWA Championship when he defeated Dusty Rhodes. He set himself on a course for his multiple world title runs throughout various wrestling promotions in different decades. Flair is regarded as one of the best tools and has even been called a bad bear face. He was not only voted Rookie of the Year in the 70s, but also most hated wrestler of the year by Pro Wrestling Illustrated in 1978. He would earn the distinction again in 1987, becoming the second person to be voted most hated wrestler twice after Greg Valentine. He also earned the title before many other legendaries of his era like Lord Pepper and Ted Beers. Although he was never a world champion, Ric Flair won tag team titles on various occasions in the 1970s. He held the NWA Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Championship with the Ripple. The two split and he would hold the titles again with John Studd. Two years later, he earned the NWA Tag Team Championship with Greg Valentine. They would have two title reigns and Flair would earn a third title run with Black Jack Mulligan. While he was creating his career, there was already a nature boy which many fans don't know about. Although he's often called Bud Rogers the nature boy to avoid confusion, Bud Rogers was a huge wrestling star who helped put Ric Flair over during his feud in the 1978. During the storyline, Flair began to refer to himself as the nature boy and it helped bolster his status as a U and as a star. Less than three years after calling himself the nature boy, he was NWA World Heavyweight Champion. But there you go guys, some interesting facts you need to know about Ric Flair's wrestling career in the 70s. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Until then, see you next time.